Thank you. Um, well, today I just want to well tell basically my story, so that's going to be easy. Um, it's hopefully inspiring for the next generation of coders, and that you can start really early with this. Um, the story is not about me. It's about my son. This is Julian. He's 10 years old, and well, he wants to become a game developer and a hacker. I don't know why the hacker part, right? So I work for IT security. <laughs> I don't understand the hacker part, but he's convinced already, I think a couple of years, that he's going to hack ball, and we're not going to catch him. <laughs> and then he's going to present that to us and sell, it, sell the solution and make a lot of money from it. This is his career opportunity. In the meantime, he wants to build games because he thinks games with all the advertising and all the things that are in there are stupid. So he builds his own games, and he has no advertising. Um, this didn't start out that way. Um, it started out with Lego, um, as with um, a lot of kids, it starts out with Lego. And it actually started out with Lego Boost. Not because he liked it. I like it. I thought it was really cool to get a robot that you can program, that is easy, that is connected to your iPad, not having to do all the difficult stuff, just get things moving. Um, and it was really fun. So we worked together on different projects. We worked all the default things. We built cool stuff together. And it all worked with his iPad, which he was already using. Um, the programming, it's really visual. So you put down all these blocks in a line, and you just pl press play, and the robot either does it or not. Um, so for him, this meant really fast results. Um, and it's really inspiring. In the end, he wasn't playing that much with the robot. He was building all kinds of different musics with the game, which I hated because I wanted to play with the robot. Um, and this is actually him uh, working, uh, playing on the guitar that he also built with uh, Lego Boost. So you could play the music that comes out of it and build different music from it and actually do some cool stuff there. Um, after that, well, we worked on that for a couple of years. So we've been doing uh, uh, coding and stuff on the, on the Lego Boost, and I'm trying to get him to the next level. <sighs> it wasn't happening. So I was like, OK, he's talking a lot about coding, and he's doing all that kind of stuff. And then um, nothing happened. But um, then he came to me, and he said, Dad, I want to become a hacker. And that's my cue, right? So that, that's where I'm up. Because if you want to become a hacker, my statement was, you need to understand how code works before you can become a hacker. Um, but where do you get started? Because if my son came up and I said, yeah, but OK, what can we do which is fun? And then he said, yeah, well, I found some books. And the first, the first book he found was this one uh, from Coder Dojo. He came with to me, and he found it in the library. And he said, I want to do this, because this says I can build my own website. And I was looking through the book, and I was really glad, because it was basic HTML, which I understand. I've been a coder for like 15 years, but I did all embedded coding. So I never did the web development. I never did this kind of stuff. I was basic C, right? And that's no fun as a kid. It's no fun as an adult. Um, so in the end, I sat down with him, and I said, OK, let's follow the book. Let's build the website. Let's do this stuff, because this is what I can do. And then he started, and he started on the first page. He skipped like the first chapter, and then he started on the third chapter, building stuff, copying code. And in the end, he didn't build the website which was in the book. He completely built his own. It's been online for a while. He asked me to take it offline because he was annoyed with it. Um, and it doesn't work exactly the way that a normal website works, right? So menus change all the time. Um, there are secret hidden links inside of other pages so you can go through different menus. Um, but he had an amazing time, and we actually had an amazing time building this website because it was starting out with basic HTML, working its way through to file systems, working its way through all the kinds of things you need to do, including CSS, and in the end, including a little bit of JavaScript to get things going. Um, but at some point, you're done with that website, so you get stuck. And he said, well, there's a new book. Um, 
can you get me this book? Because this is building a game and I want to build games, Dad. I want to really start on building really cool games. And I said, but there are way better things to build games these days than JavaScript. And he said, no, because this is the next book. I want to do this book first because it tells me how to build games. And same kind of story. In this case, it's getting a little bit more difficult for him as well. So he got stuck at some point. And luckily, I could help um, building his first infinite runner game of a little um, puppet running around, running continuously. You need to uh, uh, skip all, uh, jump over all the robots. Um, we build in a scoring mechanism. We build in all kinds of things. And then he was, Dad, programming sucks. I said, why? It's really great. You build a whole game, you build a whole website. You know how many evenings I've been working on this game and now I finally have something? <sighs> I'm done with it. Um, so this was the part where <laughs> I said, okay, I don't know if there's a book for this one. And we continued like this, right? So we built a lot of things in the evenings. We were sitting down together building all these kind of uh, uh, new features in there, but every time he got a little bit frustrated how much work it is to build actual code. Um, and that doesn't work. But these two books, I think, are amazing to get a kid started if he really wants to know a little bit about coding. Um, it's the way it describes everything step by step, and you can really get a result with the basics that I like a kid to learn. Um, and then he came to me and he said, Dad, I found something on the internet, and you don't know this. It's Scratch, and it's great. It's fast. Um, I can build cool things in there. I can build games in there. And he actually, he told me how Scratch works. Um, and um, he built, he has his own page on Scratch. I think there are now more than 150 games, he bigger and smaller, and all kinds of things in there, which are the basic stupid games that you think, OK, is this it? And the more complex games, which he took a lot of time building it. But in the end, he has been doing this for weeks in a row. So we had to drag him off his laptop. So he has a MacBook, which everybody thinks, well, oh, yeah, the kid of 10 has a MacBook. Yeah, the MacBook is older than he is. Um, but it's good enough, right? So he can really start coding on that, uh, uh, on that MacBook. And he's been showing everyone his games that he built and trying to convince all the kids that they want to use his games so he gets more followers, he gets more credits, um, and convincing people to use these because there is no advertisement in there. And it's really for free. And it gives him a good feeling on uh, coding. Basically, what I saw when I start, first started using Scratch is, ah, <laughs> this, is, this is the Lego boost all over again, but then in a different way. So it works completely the same. But the main thing that I did was explain to him how all these different if structures and for loops and all these kind of things actually worked in a way that I could never explain to him. So from using Scratch, he actually started to understand the whole JavaScript game that he built. And then comes the part of what's next, right? So <laughs> I'm done here, right? So at some point, he's explaining me how Scratch works and fixing my problems in Scratch. That's why I became a manager. Um, <laughs> and this is next, right? So he's now, I'm pushing him a little bit to the Arduino part because I like him to do embedded. I, it's basically where I come from. And I like hardware, and I like things to blow up. And that doesn't happen in web development. But he's investigating Minecraft. He's investigating building games in Roblox. Um, and he's investigating ChatGPT. So um, who was here in the last presentation, you know why you need to use something like a, a large language model to do this. Um, but actually, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, this presentation is already outdated. Because he came to me and he said, Dad, do you want me to build a game in what language do you want me to build a game? Should I use Java? Should I use JavaScript again? Or should I actually start using a game engine? OK, you start using a game engine because I think that's the next thing you can go to. 
But the only problem is, I cannot help you anymore. So he's already there, where he's further ahead than I am. And that's where I wanted to take you along. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. I think uh, it was really inspirational to teach your children how to code, but to be honest, I myself was a bit inspired to be having like flashbacks again to when I was a child and excited about uh, technology and science and all this stuff. So uh, even the adults, I think, uh, had a lot uh, to get out of your talk. So thank you very much, Bram. Give a round of applause for Bram, please.